The Kitchen Nightmares series is no stranger to dirty kitchens and restaurants. Many restaurants on the show have old moldy food in their walk-in freezers, raw meat right next to cooked meat, and dirty surfaces everywhere. One of them even had an actual live pigeon flying around inside the kitchen, but this one. I think this one is probably the absolute dirtiest kitchen from the show. I'm talking rats, roaches, flies, all of it, in addition to rotten food and everything else. This was an episode that allegedly completely destroyed Tumman's career to the point that they tried to take legal action to prevent it from being aired on TV because of how bad they looked in the episode. The restaurant I'm talking about is called Dylan's. The episode starts off as usual. Gordon comes in, tries the food, and gives it some really harsh criticism. Not exactly an Indian classic, is it? It looks like a dehydrated turd. Maybe you're wondering what kind of food does a restaurant called Dylan's actually serve? I definitely was. And herein lies the first problem with the restaurant. Martin, the general manager, describes the type of food they serve by saying, This is an American Irish restaurant with an Indianness connected to it. What? As customers, I think we all intuitively understand that it's important to have a clear identity in terms of what type of food you serve. Olive Garden has Italian food, Papa John's has pizza. Imagine if Papa John's was an Italian Korean barbecue restaurant with an Irishness to it. Not only does it confuse people as to what they actually serve, but it really doesn't inspire any confidence that the types of food that they do serve will be done well. Usually you focus on one genre of food and do that one thing really well, not try to open a school cafeteria that serves five types of mediocre shit. To make things even more confusing, there's not one, but three different managers in this tiny restaurant all working under one owner. There's a floor manager, a general manager, and a, uh, operations manager? This really just sounds like they all do the same exact job, but one at different job titles. On top of that, there are two different chefs working in the same kitchen because the chefs cooking the Indian food don't know how to cook anything else. Basically, if someone orders something from the non-Indian menu, this manager that looks like he's from the 1920s goes back in the kitchen and cooks it for them. Given all of that, it's not really surprising that the food was pretty shit. Another huge problem is that right from the beginning of the episode, the show points out how many flies there are in the restaurant. Even while Gordon is trying to sample the food, he complains about the flies bothering him. To be fair, depending on where you're located, it can be pretty hard to keep flies from coming in when customers open the door. But damn, that's a lot of them. After trying the food, Gordon is apparently so offended by it that he asks the chef that made his fish to sit down and eat it. We haven't got any other chefs in the back that can cook this food. They don't know how to cook any Western style food. Can you do me a favor? Yes. Either. I kind of feel bad for him, honestly. Interesting side note, after watching the entire series of Kitchen Nightmares again, I noticed that Gordon Ramsay was a lot meaner and more serious in the early episodes of the show. In the later seasons, he's way more easygoing and even cracks a lot of jokes. He still yells at people, don't get me wrong, but it seems more like he's doing it to try and get the restaurant back on track as opposed to just being pissed. In this episode, he seems more like he's genuinely pissed off. Maybe he was just having a bad day, I don't know. It would be pretty hard to be in a good mood after eating that food, I guess. Poor guy is just left there in the dining room eating his fish. Gordon then fucks off to the kitchen to give the chefs an ass reaming, and after complaining about how bad the lamb was, the chef reveals that the reason it tasted so bad was because the lamb they served him was old. Maybe the standard Gordon has a very high compared to mine. You think? But next is the part of the show where Gordon observes a typical dinner service, and it only gets worse from here. The dinner service is pretty much an all-around train wreck. The food is very slow to get out of the kitchen, despite the fact that they have several chefs working, in addition to eight servers, all three managers, and the owner in the kitchen all at the same time. At one point, Gordon notices one of the line cooks is literally just standing there doing absolutely nothing. After asking him why he wasn't doing anything, the cook says he wasn't given anything to do. So Gordon calls over Martin, the general manager, who ironically appeared to be messing with his phone instead of working, and berated him for not doing his job as manager. Get me the general manager, Martin, please. All right. Not your Martin! This young man's here, he's standing here, and he hasn't got anything to cook. You've got members of your team standing here getting paid, doing fuck all. I've never met a general manager so shit as you. If this was your money, would you let him stand here playing with no. his dick? That's what you're doing here, isn't it? You're riding Mohammed, you know. You're skinning that poor man. Yes, you fucking are. You're taking advantage of a weak, rich man. And to no one's surprise, the customers don't seem to be enjoying the slow service, bad food, and the flies. But after that abysmal service, it was time to do the usual kitchen refrigerator inspection. And this is where things get really bad. 
Gordon finds rotten burger patties, rotten chicken, and mystery food that even the chefs can't identify. Then he decides to go into the basement. What goes on down here? That's my sex dungeon. What's that smell? For Mr. God's Mr. sake! Look at that! Look! Cockroaches. I love how he's just like, what's that smell? For God's sake! I don't know if they edited that or what, but that shit was hilarious. Like I said previously, this is the absolute worst kitchen in terms of dirtiness I've ever seen on Kitchen Nightmares by a country mile. It's absolutely infested with cockroaches. I think every fucking species of cockroach in North America was represented in that kitchen. There's like a whole ecosystem going on in there. He also finds rat traps and rat droppings all over the place in addition to rotten produce and a bag of lettuce with flies in it. I guess that probably explains why the restaurant can't get rid of the flies in their dining room. Now you might be tempted to say, yeah, it's gross, but it's in the basement, not the actual kitchen, so it's not that bad. But they do have a walk-in freezer down there and they are using it for food storage. And you can see in multiple shots, they're storing plates, trays, and all types of other kitchen implements down there. So it's not like they aren't using that area or anything. They're keeping cooking equipment and the food they use down there. Gordon calls over the general manager Martin again and starts ripping into him about how dangerously unhygienic the kitchen is. He also finds half a rotten tomato and realizes that they probably just served the missing half, which prompts him to frantically ask if it went out to a customer. That's been sliced. That's gone out. What is that? Where is it? Hey, madam, where's that tomato gone? Look, it's fucking rotten, you fucking idiot. It's rotten. Has a customer just been served a slice of tomato? No, 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 no. no, no. The cameraman is just sitting there watching someone eat poisoned food. So after that, Gordon immediately shuts down the kitchen and goes on an absolute tirade that even the diners can hear. Shit you'd expect Tiger Woods to tee off with, look at it. Rubber, rubber, rubber! That's what I got given at the fucking pub! He then gets what looks like a hazardous waste disposal crew and they clean the kitchen top to bottom. And he even takes him to one of his nearby restaurants to see how clean the kitchen should be. Their reaction is basically, Oh, yeah, the kitchen should be clean. So after that groundbreaking revelation, Gordon does the usual menu redesign, and he also brings in a skilled Indian food chef named Vikas Khanna to help run the kitchen and keep them on track. And after seeing their kitchen, I think they need it. They also redid the whole interior of the restaurant and... What the fuck? You didn't fix the floor? Look at that shit. It looks like a clown threw up everywhere. Maybe they couldn't afford to change it or something. In any case, they relaunched the restaurant and changed the name to Purnima. But things do not go as planned. During the relaunch service, there's confusion among the staff and that causes the kitchen to get backed up and food to come out really slow. The narrator of the show places pretty much the entire blame for the restaurant's problems on Martin, the general manager, who does seem to be a little bit out of his element. But after one of the other managers steps up, the service goes a little more smoothly and they manage to get through the night. After the dinner service, Gordon sits down with the owner, Muhammad, and tells him that he really needs to get rid of one of his managers because he has too many. Gordon suggests getting rid of Martin and accuses him of being manipulative, but apparently Martin and the other staff were just standing off to the side within earshot during this conversation. Upon hearing Gordon's accusations, Martin gets pissed off and interrupts the discussion to say his piece. Between you and I, Martin has an amazing way of manipulating you. Thanks to you. Tonight, yeah. tonight Mohammed, yeah. I've never used you, I've, I've respected you, yeah. I'm proud of what we've done, I've never cheated you. Excuse and I take well, well, what's, what's going on? You are seeing management for, for, for management. You're not recommending, you're not you're recommending. Good. You are you're enough, I've had enough. Okay. Because okay. you have been just, insulting, uh, you have been accusing me of, 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 of uh, achieving this plan. I have nothing to be guilty of. You what? Nothing. You sat in it. Yeah. You ran it, you sat in it, yes. you wasted it. Yes, I wasted yeah, it, yes. You encouraged it. This is my last night, I'm out of here, I quit. So, for some reason, after this huge confrontation, Martin decides to quit, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. He was mad because he thought Muhammad would fire him, which is why he confronted Gordon, but Muhammad might not have fired him. If he really wanted to keep the job, then why did he quit instead of waiting to see if he was going to get fired? Gordon was definitely really hard on Martin pretty much the entire episode, but without having been there, it's hard to tell if any or all of the criticism was deserved. There are a lot of clips of Martin looking down at his phone and just standing around, but the show was filmed over the course of a week. Maybe 
maybe they only showed the times he wasn't working and omitted the times he was working, but it's hard to say. But that's pretty much how the episode ends. So now let's talk about what happened to the restaurant and its employees after the show. First, I think we have to talk about Martin, the general manager that Gordon heavily criticized. After either being exposed or made to look like a bumbling idiot on national TV, you know he's gonna try and take some kind of legal action. And on June 19th, 2007, Martin filed a lawsuit to try and get $3 million and an injunction to stop the episode from airing. Now, I'm obviously not a lawyer and I don't have any legal education, but I read through all the legal documents I could find on the issue and I'm gonna try my best to break it all down. The entire complaint was 61 pages in total. So what did Martin accuse Gordon of doing? This is where things get a little bit wild. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here, but basically Martin accused Gordon and Kitchen Nightmares of fake a lot of the show, setting up an elaborate scheme to frame him and have him fired, and even assault. Yes, he accused Gordon Ramsay of assaulting him during the show. Let's start with that. The complaint reads, on April 8, 2007, while producing The Dylan Show, Ramsey put his face several inches from one of plaintiff's ears and screamed into the plaintiff's face, when I go for a shit, you are the little bit of shit I just can't get out. I really wish that part had made it into the final show. It continues. Plaintiff had learned prior to April 2007 that Ramsey was a martial arts expert and had served in the British Special Forces and had the skill, if not the experience, in crippling or killing victims who were unprepared for or defenseless against any such assault. In another part of the complaint, he says that Gordon was a captain in the 23rd SAS unit and called him one of the most feared persons in Britain. Okay, we gotta stop right there. Gordon Ramsay has not served in the military and he is not ex-Special Forces. I don't know where Martin got that from or why you would make up a claim like that that is extremely easy to look up and disprove, but yeah, not true. As far as him being a martial artist, using the Wayback Machine, I was able to find an interview that he did with Playboy a while back where he says that he does have a black belt and practices martial arts. So I guess that bit is true. But as to whether or not he's a killing machine that's guilty of assault for yelling at someone, Eh, I'm not convinced. Next, let's look at allegations that the show was partly faked. The complaint is littered with accusations of the show being faked and just generally being dishonest. He claims that the customers were hired to be actors for the production, were paid $75 each, and were required to sign releases. He also claims that, upon information and belief, Ramsey and one or more of his producers and production employees had planned prior to commencement of the Dylan's production to falsely blame someone for various conditions fabricated by Ramsey and or his staff, such as 1. Discovery of rotten meat, 2. Discovery of rat droppings, and 3. Choosing a wobbly chair and having Ramsey sit down on the chair. He also claims that there was an incident where Gordon Gordon pretended to smash his cell phone and make him pick it up off the ground. It says, On Sunday, April 7, 2008, on the sidewalk in front of Dylan's, Ramsey grabbed plaintiff's cell telephone, substituted a different cell phone without plaintiff's knowledge, then threw the substitute phone onto the sidewalk, then directed plaintiff to retrieve the phone. This forced plaintiff to get on his hands and knees on the sidewalk to look for what he thought was plaintiff's phone without success. Meanwhile, Ramsey dialed plaintiff's cell phone number in front of various production staff and Dylan's employees and left the following message for plaintiff. Hello, general manager, Gordon here. Can you get your arse back to the restaurant and attempt to do your job, please? Now, quickly. Thank you, general manager. Fake in a sarcastic tone. Now, this alleged clip was not in the final episode, so we can't really be sure if it ever even happened. It does kind of sound like a stunt Gordon might pull, but who knows. Reading about it in the complaint, it does sound a little bit mean though if it did happen. Martin also defends himself in the complaint by saying that he wasn't responsible for any of the staff or restaurant issues that were shown in the episode, and he claims that his job was to book entertainment events for the restaurant, which he claims he was successful at. Now, I probably don't need to say this, but in my opinion, claims in lawsuits are frequently exaggerated and potentially even made up in order to help the plaintiff's chances of winning. The phrase, upon information and belief, is absolutely littered throughout this complaint. And from what I, as a non-legal scholar, understand, that's basically a legal term that means that you don't have first-hand evidence of the claim, you just heard it from someone or somewhere else. I assume that if you make specific claims that you don't have evidence for without that qualifier, you could get yourself into legal trouble. But all that's to say that we don't really know how many, if any, of these accusations is true. As far as what Martin was asking for, basically, as I understand it, when he agreed to go on the show, he signed something saying that if there was any legal problem, it would be arbitrated instead of going to court. Arbitration 
arbitration is a faster, cheaper, less formal way of settling legal disputes than going to court. Basically, you just get a neutral third party to be the arbitrator, and they decide who gets what. But Martin is arguing that the arbitration agreement he signed should be void because the show was allegedly faked, and his case should go to court. But unfortunately for Martin, the judge disagreed with him, as this article from Fox 42 says, Earlier this month, a judge tossed the suit into arbitration. The article also had this statement from Gordon about the lawsuit. I would never ever dream of setting anything up, Mr. Ramsey said by phone from London on Friday. I want to sleep at night. We were issued a writ because, God bless America, if the toilet paper is not thick enough and you come out with a rash on your ass, you'll get sued. As far as what happened with arbitration, unfortunately, while civil suits are public information, apparently arbitrations are not. So we don't know if he got anything in the end, but I would guess not. I found another article about the episode from the Gazette Review, and it says that in 2008, after the episode had been shown, Martin once again took the Kitchen Nightmares production company to court. This time he was claiming $800,000. Martin's legal battle, however, ultimately came to nothing. And that's pretty much all the concrete info I could find on Martin Hyde. As far as what he's doing today, or where he is, we really don't know as he doesn't seem to have any kind of online presence. So now let's talk about the fate of the actual restaurant. About a year after the episode of Kitchen Nightmares aired, Gordon returned to do a revisited episode and see what happened to Pernima. The owner told Gordon that business was up and that Vikas Khanna, the chef that was brought in temporarily, ended up staying permanently. It's also mentioned that Martin did not return to work there. The whole restaurant is shown to be very clean and they even take customers into the basement to show off how clean it is. However, the Gazette Review article I mentioned earlier says that the restaurant eventually closed down permanently in 2009, only a year after the recap episode. I was really curious as to why they closed down so soon after that since they seemed to be doing relatively well in the revisited episode. I managed to find an article from Delish.com where the writer and a co-worker went to the restaurant after seeing the show to try it out. This visit to the restaurant took place less than two weeks after the airing of the revisited episode since it's dated September 18th and the episode aired on the 4th. The writer even mentions that seeing the revisited episode made them want to try it out. According to the writer, the food was good, but it cost in the $18 to $24 per meal range, and they said their money would be better spent somewhere else. They also complained about noisy music from the adjacent bar Dylan's, which I guess was in this building? So it sounds like maybe they split the restaurant into Purnima, which served Indian food, and a bar called Dylan's that served drinks. But that's just my guess. In addition, they mentioned that the restaurant was nearly empty. I looked around the fabric walled dining room. Besides us and one another couple, it was completely and totally dead. At 6.45 in New York's theater district on a Wednesday. So I guess they must have put the ugly fabric back on the walls as well. They also said that the customers that were there were taking home leftovers, which was proof that the serving sizes were too big. I also wanted to read the Yelp reviews for the place to get some different opinions. There are only seven reviews for the restaurant. Two four-star reviews, three three-star reviews, one two-star review, and one one-star review, giving it a total average of three stars. Not spectacular. This two-star review from 2008 said, We came in and there was only one other table occupied on a Saturday night at 9 p.m. Regardless, I loved Indian food and was looking forward to it. We had a bottle of Pellegrino, which was smeared with some nasty food shit, and the bottle was sticky and smelled like shit. Okay, not good. They finally brought me the chicken vindaloo, and it was mediocre. My sister's biryani was also just mediocre. It was lacking serious flavor. The bar next door has quite loud music. We had mediocre service with mediocre food at prices that were way too high. $100 tab for us both. A four-star review from 2008 said, The food was pretty good to boot. Most memorable were the samosas and the chicken tikka masala. It was tasty and melted like butter in your mouth. Several of the reviews mentioned that the restaurant was very empty and that the food was mediocre with high prices, so it sounds like that article from Delish was probably spot on. It also makes me wonder about how packed it was on the day of shooting for the revisited episode. I have heard claims that the production staff rounds up customers to be in the restaurant while filming just so it doesn't look completely empty, but I need to do some more research to verify that for sure. One thing that I noticed while editing is that in the revisited episode, when Gordon first walks into the restaurant, it's completely empty. Maybe he got there early before their normal operating time so the customers wouldn't be disturbed, but you can see in this shot just before he walks in, it looks like daytime. It doesn't really look like early morning to me, and if they weren't open for lunch, I think Gordon would have changed that immediately. It does cut when he walks in the door, but in shots where you can see out the window from inside, it still looks like it's around the same time, and it looks pretty bright outside. It's not until later when Gordon interviews the staff in the dining room that there are some customers, but take that as you will, I guess. It does sound really expensive, though, at least for my taste. I don't live in New York, so I don't know what the average food costs are in the area, but the reviews seem to agree with me. 
It seems like high prices and mediocre food ended up putting the final nail in Pranima's coffin. And to be honest, a lot of the restaurants from the show I might be willing to give another chance after getting revamped. But after seeing all those rat droppings and roaches, that's a hard sell for me. I can't really blame people for not wanting to try it after seeing that. But there is a positive side to this story. Vikas Khanna, the Indian chef that Gordon Ramsay brought in to run the kitchen, has gone on to have an extremely successful career. He has a long list of accolades. He's written more than 36 cookbooks, been in a number of TV shows including A Judge on Hell's Kitchen, Throw Down with Bobby Flay, and a guest chef on The Martha Stewart Show. He's been one of the permanent judges on MasterChef India since season 2. He's produced two documentaries and a movie called The Last Color that made it to the last round of picks to win an Oscar. And he also opened his own restaurant in New York called Ju Noon that ended up getting a Michelin star. On top of all of that, he won the Asia Game Changer Award in 2020 for feeding billions across India amid the COVID-19 pandemic through a massive Feed India drive. He seems like a really nice and genuine guy, so good for him. It's pretty cool that this episode of Kitchen Nightmares was the starting point for his TV career. And as a wholesome final note, remember that one manager named Andrew that looked like he was from the 30s? He and Vikas ended up becoming really good friends that have collaborated together on a number of things since then. He worked with Vikas on some of the cookbooks he wrote as a writer and a photographer, and if you look at his LinkedIn page, it says that he worked at Vegas' restaurant June Noon as a kitchen manager for two years. So they've clearly maintained a pretty close relationship since meeting on Kitchen Nightmares. Andrew is currently a writer for an online classical music magazine called Backtrack? Bok? Bok Track? Where he writes about dance performances. So although the restaurant barely survived past the airing of the episode, some good did come from it. Vikas Khanna and Andrew have made very successful careers for themselves, and Vikas' restaurant June Noon is still open today with really good reviews on Yelp. So I guess that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I would like to briefly mention that I recently crossed the 2000 sub mark and I just want to say a huge thank you for that. It's really encouraging and humbling to know that people find my videos entertaining and want to watch them. So thank you so much for that. I'll keep them coming. But I guess that's all for now. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.